Outside today, as you can see, we've got the cover on the caravan. One of the key jobs is that's coming off. A little bit windy because unlike the rest of the country that's basking in blue skies and sunshine and double digit temperatures, well, over here in Norfolk on the East Coast, uh, it's been freezing, <laughs> been wet, it's been windy and it has been cold. The log burner is on in the bungalow. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Dave here from the Caravantastic crew. That's coming off today. Uh, we're gonna start getting the caravan ready for our first trips out, which fingers crossed are all gonna happen for us in just a few weeks time now. So, if you've just bought yourself a caravan or a motorhome, or you're about to do that, let me tell you that uh, obviously the key cost is the unit itself, the caravan or the motorhome. But there are other certain essentials that you're gonna have to have to make the whole thing a success when you get on a campsite. So today's video is going to be talking through what some of those caravanning and motorhome essentials are, particularly aimed at beginners, at newbies, and we've all been newbies, uh, but a good little reminder uh, for everyone else. The other thing to say is you just seem to harbour a whole load of stuff. I'm always buying things for the caravan and a lot of them are actually here in the garage and never ever go out in the van with me. So you'll see what I mean in a little while. So we'll try and uh, distinguish the uh, must-haves versus the nice-to-haves as we go through the vid. But first off, let's get this cover off. Right, the cover's off. What's the state of the roof? That is the big question, isn't it? Let's go and have a look up here. So, despite having a cover on, the roof is pretty green in places and it's gonna require some work. And I was always gonna wash it and clean it anyway. I think we need to get the job done sooner rather than later. So there's one job for me to do this next week. Give the caravan a good clean. So overall, pretty clean apart from the roof, but we're gonna give this van a real good clean and a polish next week. The weather's supposed to improve next week, so fingers crossed. But some sort of quick inspections it's things like this when you get close up so we're going to clean that right up and get some fresh whitener on all the seals around the units so i've got a service due but not till may and when the service is done having a new gas point put in here uh, for the barbecue because we've never used the barbecue since we bought this caravan about two and a bit years ago and then just over here possibly just above this light here i'm going to have an external power point put in when we do the service as well so that should be in may one thing that you have to remember is uh, if you've got a motor mover make sure you don't leave that motor mover on because you'll get a flat spot on your wheels on your tires uh, and every now and again you just need to turn the van just so that the um, caravan's weight is not just sitting on one part of the tires all the time so just every month or so i i tend to move the van just to avoid any flat spots. When I open the locker in a little while, I know I'm gonna get the shock of my life. I know what a mess it is already. So a bit of work to do. I'm gonna start by cleaning this locker out. Quick walk around the back here. I wanna show you, we're lucky enough to keep the van on the drive. So I do keep the power plugged in. Here's some more of those seals that run the toilet cassette area. I want to get those all cleaned up and made nice and white again. What I have in the garage here 
is one of these adapters so that you can plug your mains power in to your plug at home. Power on, and we just keep a little oil-fired radiator inside, so every now and again, I don't have it on all the time, but just put it on then again, just to keep everything aired. And what Helen did a few weeks ago was took all the internal sort of cushions and soft furnishings into the house so that we um, can get those aired. So it's pretty windy here. I hope you can hear me okay. Let's have a look inside the locker cocker. Oh dear, oh me. I've got to find a way of making this locker a lot tidier than it is. There's so much stuff knocking around in here. It's untrue. So first job today, get the locker tidied up. So not in any particular order, folks. The number of things you're going to need. Um, and I'm just ticking these off as I empty my locker. And first thing I come across are these leveling blocks. We've got a pair of these. Absolutely essential because most pitches that you get to uh, are rarely perfectly level. So if you don't want to be rolling out of bed at night or have your dinner sliding off the dinner table, you'll need to level the caravan using these chocks. What I'll do, I'll put some uh, indicated prices for these items below so you can get a good idea of the sort of costs involved. Now if you're lucky like we were, this is our second caravan and when we bought this, we bought it privately from a couple that had just had the van about a year from new. They rarely used it, they bought a place in Cyprus, spent most of the time over there, they weren't using the van, we bought it off them. We got a cracking deal but not only did we get a good price, we also got all of the content. So from our previous van, we'd already bought an awning and we'd already bought televisions and we'd already bought all this stuff. When we bought this van, we got everything again. So we've got two of everything at least, in some cases three. So you'll need leveling blocks. You'll also need some chocks to put under the wheel once you've leveled it. Now, obviously you've got a handbrake on the van. You've probably got a, a wheel lock, which will stop, help stop it moving. You've probably got a motor mover which will help stop it moving but this is a fail safe you ram those underneath as well so you need a pair of chocks to go with your blocks next up and this is really embarrassing electric hookup i mean look at the state of that i've actually got three of these as well i've got a 25 meter which is this which i hardly use i think the other one that i have is 10 meter which is the one that's connected to the van now up to the garage I've also got a further 25 meter brand new one in the garage which came with this van that I've never used but I'm embarrassed by this so my very next job I've bought a little device which I saw another YouTube vlogger using just to tidy this up so here we go and this is it the 25 meter cable tidy extension lead holder which you can put on and roll and unroll as required. Now I've seen some people say they've got one of these and they find it a pain. Well, time will tell. It would start raining, wouldn't it? Anyway, doesn't that look better? 25 meters of cable in here, it's pretty heavy. I do wonder why I'm carrying this and a 10 meter. Probably just need the one. I don't like having loads of cable hanging around my caravan. I know you can tuck it underneath out of the way, but I just think it looks a mess. But there are times when you get to your caravan site, particularly if you're gonna go maybe to a CL where the electric hookup could be a fair distance from your van so you do need extra cable and if I wanted to I can connect this one to the 10 meter and I've got a 35 meter I've never had to though okay so we've got to site we've got the caravan level on the leveling ramps we've used our chocks to make sure it's all safe we've got electric hookup next thing you're going to need is some water you need an aqua roll folks and again uh, if you're like me you're lucky that you've got this stuff in advance when you bought your van if you're buying from a dealer, you'll almost certainly need to buy all this stuff. Not just the Aqua Roll to get your 40 litres of water, um, you'll need a pump as well. Now, in some cases that might come with the van or you may need to buy it separately. Get yourself an Aqua Roll, absolutely essential. Now, if you've got yourself onto a full service pitch, then uh, you're probably gonna need some hose. Again, a bit embarrassed by that, stuck in the locker, just looking like this. Um, so I've bought a little bag to put my hose in just to help keep that tidy as well. What did I tell you earlier about the Norfolk weather? It's raining, just my luck isn't it? Anyway, hose pipe now, a nice waterproof zippable bag. And already starting to feel a lot more organised. 
What have we got next? Right, moved under cover now because the rain's getting a bit too heavy. So we'll carry on the video under the cover of the garage door. So you've got electric, you've got level on the pitch, you've got your aqua roll, so you've got water, you've got a water pump. Um, the next thing that you're gonna need, folks, gas. This is not quite empty, but it's not far off. Uh, when I bought our first caravan, which we bought from a dealer, um, I remember getting the old credit card out at the end when I bought some gas. I bought um, an awning, bought some lights to go in the awning, bought uh, a load of extra pegs to peg it down, um, bought all these little extras. And by the time I finished, I think I spent about another 1,500 pounds. So just to give you an idea of what we're talking about, but you're gonna need gas and you're gonna need at least one bottle, but probably depending on what your plans are, two of these, okay? Now these are Cala propane, six, kilo, six kilogram bottles. I can't remember what I paid for these, but I'll have a little look now and see what the latest sort of going price is for this sort of stuff. And I'll put it on the screen so you can see below. Because the other thing you're gonna need for your gas bottle is a spanner to make sure that you can connect and tighten up the connections to the gas bottles. Um, this is, it says size 30, I don't honestly know what that means, but you have to just make sure that when you get your gas bottle, you get a spanner to make sure you can connect it. Otherwise, it's all a bit of a waste of time, really. Now, it's a small but really essential point. Your wastewater, your grey water from your shower or from your sink in the kitchen, it's got to go somewhere. So, you need, first of all, some pipe. Now, some people have some fabulous plumbed-in concoctions that they use. Mine's basic. There's normally two waste outlets, one from the shower bathroom or um, washroom, one from the kitchen. That connects up to a single hose, which then goes on either the end of this if I need to extend it. So I've got an extra bit of hose if I need to extend it. Normally if I'm on a full service pitch, I will put that on. Uh, and then that needs to go into uh, a grey waste water carrier. I'll show you that now. So this is the little baby, the waste master. You've got to have one of these. Your grey water has got to go somewhere. It will normally, unless you're on a full service pitch, come out of those little hose pipes I showed you earlier into the back of here. When it's full, you can wheel it away down to the Elton point or the water point. Whoops, no, not the camera flying. Down the water point, get it all emptied, and go back and do it again. It's all part and parcel of the fun. So we've got our gas, we've got our electric, we've got our water in, We've got our waste water out. Uh, we've got our leveling block, so we're nice and level on pitch. Have you finished spending money now that you've bought your caravan or motorhome? It just goes on and on, folks, because you know, you're gonna need to use a toilet in your caravan, clearly. So you will need some pink. This is the stuff that you pour in the, um, the flusher, if you like, in the toilet, so that when you've been to the loo, you give it a little flush, nice fragrance. Nice and pink, keeps everywhere smelling fresh. Very important. The other thing you'll need is some blue. Uh, this goes into your toilet cassette. And this can, you just pour a few capfuls in. Uh, what this will do is again, keep the toilet cassette smelling clean and fresh primarily. Uh, I'm also told this breaks down any solids, whatever they are. Every now and then, your toilet um, cassette will need cleaned out. Something like tank freshener is a good thing to use, uh, along with tank cleaner, just to keep everything, keep, you know, let's keep the smells nice, you know? That's important. Now you can get kind of an all-in-one. So this goes into the toilet cassette and also into the flusher in the toilet, in your Thetford toilet. Um, I'm not sure if these are that good, some people say they're great, but I, I prefer to have a pink and a blue. Don't know why, probably end up costing me more money, but it just feels right to me somehow. But I have got both, so I've given it a try. You'll also probably find one of these really handy. A uh, little six litre watering can, which we keep in the front locker. And primarily, you know, if you nip into the loo, you're going for a dog walk, um, take that with you. And then when you get to the water point, normally outside the toilet block, fill that up, come back, put it in your aqua roll, uh, and then you can just keep your aqua roll topped up. So it's up to you, but I find that really useful to have a watering can. 
What else is, I've got the steam coming out of my mouth. What else is essential? I'm gonna go indoors because I'm getting cold and getting wet. And um, the other items I'm gonna talk about, which are not necessarily, I feel like a dragon, not necessarily essential, but you're probably gonna to want to have things like an awning, things like sun canopies, things like um, mats for the awning, you know, ground sheets, things like a barbecue, things like other outdoor um, utensils for eating outside, things like fold up chairs, you know, God, the, the list goes on and on and on. Think about the weight that you carry. Do you need all this stuff? Right, I'm going inside, I'm going to get the kettle on, make a cup of tea, and uh, we'll talk about some of those other things and what sort of costs are involved. Catch you in a minute. Uh, well, that's better. It's chucking it down outside. It's cold, it's wet and it's windy. But in here, mm, central heating and a nice hot cup of tea. Where did we get to? Right, Helen's decided not to join me because of the weather, because we were going to put the um, soft furnishings back in the caravan today. That might be a job for tomorrow. That may end up in this video, could end up in a future video. Um, other things that we need to consider, um, just from a health and safety perspective and where fire prevention is concerned, if you're buying your caravan or motorhome from a responsible dealer, then this should be given and should already be in the uh, in the unit itself. But things like a fire extinguisher, a fire blanket, a smoke detector, and a carbon monoxide alarm are all things that really ought to be in your van or your motorhome. As I say, if you're buying from a dealer, uh, that ought to be there as standard anyway and included in the price. If you're buying privately though, you may need to consider, first of all, one looking out to see if those things are there, but also if they're not, making sure that you've got them on your list of essential things to purchase because you're going to need them. A few other things as well that I've got in the locker. Um, in terms of essentials, you do need some towing mirrors, folks. Towing mirrors are absolutely essential and possibly even a legal requirement. I'll have to double check, but I think they are. Um, the other thing that I carry in the car uh, when we're towing is a cordless drill. Um, that is primarily for putting down and taking up the steadies on the van. So I've got a little attachment that I put at the end of the cordless drill. Otherwise, you have to get a wrench and you know and wind those steadies. That, that's a killer. It's an absolute killer. So you can get a cordless drill from B&Q for about 15, 20 quid. It's worth every penny. Get an attachment online, either on Amazon, on eBay or somewhere like that. And uh, just get those, th you know, a bit like the Formula One pit crew. You know, where they're taking the wheels off. <laughs> I <laughs> get the steadies up really quick. So you've got to do that. Um, what else have I got? Oh, just stupid things like exterior um, lights, coloured lights that go outside the awning. Carry those around in the back of the car normally. The other thing though that we have in either the front locker or in the side locker, which goes under our double bed, is, so you're going to die when I tell you, um, a rotary washing line, <laughs> absolute nice to have, but a rotary washing line, I don't know why we've got it, but I think we've probably used it three or four times in four or five years. So we carry it about, it's very lightweight, but nevertheless, it takes up space. Um, we have a pump for the air awning. We have a 25 meter TV coax cable. I think I've used it twice. Uh, I mentioned in a previous vlog that we, go digital now, we do everything through our um, uh, phone in terms of 4G onto the Roku box and we just don't bother with aerials anymore. There will always be the time though when you can't get a signal and then you need to use the aerial. So if I take that cable out, you know that I'm gonna need it. It's just the way it is, isn't it? We also carry two um, high back reclining chairs. <laughs> we carry two fold up smaller chairs sort of thing you'd put over your shoulder if you were gonna to go to a concert or something like that. Uh, we have in the caravan under the bed a spare wheel for the caravan. That's got a fair bit of weight in it. Um, we carry, not every time we go away, but if we're going away for any period of time, we will carry uh, an awning. That normally sits in the center of the van while we're traveling over the, over the sort of um, the wheels in the center of the van. And obviously as soon as we get set up, it comes out. Um, we have under the bed also various poles 
and straps for the awning or the sun canopy. So I also carry a sun canopy, which we do like to use that in, in preference of an awning if it's a, you know the weather's good and it's in the middle of the summer. We tend, not always, but we tend to carry a barbecue with us if we're going about. Um, we tend to carry uh, an electric hob for outdoor cooking. We do lots of that. And sometimes we carry a single burner gas hob as well, just for fun. Uh, we also have one of these sort of zip up um, little cupboard things that we put in the awning. So you can put clothes in it, you can put shoes in it, uh, you can sit your TV on top of it, carry that around. I've got two gram sheets. Why I carry two, I don't know, but I've got two. Just carry two about for some strange reason. Um, I've got a spirit level. I've got a bag with hundreds and hundreds of metal pegs in it. A lot of weight in those metal pegs, but metal pegs are brilliant. Um, I think we're getting somewhere close to that's probably just about it. The only other thing is I have a, um, a little nose weight scale, little pole that we can weigh your nose weight. Not use that as often as I should do. Um, we'll talk about weights in another on another occasion. But you've probably gathered already in this video. You start piling your van up or your car up with all this stuff. But, you know, this is before you put any pots, any pans, any crockery. You know, any um, glasses or um, plates and cups and kettles and toasters and you know, you pile all this stuff in your caravan. It is a lot of weight. Just another thing to consider, really, under the heading of security, you, you probably need to get yourself a hitch lock. Um, some people say a complete waste of time, because if someone wants to nick your caravan, they'll nick it anyway. But I, I find a bit of peace of mind, I get a hitch lock. And not cheap. I think if I remember rightly, I paid about £100. I'll put an example of the hitch lock, the uh, Alco lock that I use, or I bought, on screen now with a price. Uh, on top of that, also bought an Alco wheel lock. Um, now, these do vary depending upon the model of caravan that you have. So... Um, you can, I think, pick up some generic wheel locks, uh, but the Alcos tend to be specific to your caravan make and model. And then the only other thing is I've, I also added a, an extra uh, lock to the door, a little sliding lock. You might have seen it in some of the vlogs before, uh, which I've got on the outside of our main door to the caravan, just for peace of mind, really. So I think they're, they're not essential items, but I think you know, you probably ought to be seriously considering getting them. Having forked out several thousand pounds for a caravan or motorhome, um, you want to make sure that security is good. I know in a motorhome, you'll have kind of um, locks on a steering wheel or perhaps uh, a clutch lock, I think they call it. Um, you know, so you just need to shop around and see what sort of security you require for your unit. But pretty essential, I'd say. I, I think it's important. I think for now, that's probably just about everything that I can think of that we carry. I, I'm, I know that some of this is nice to have and I would put, I'd label some of it under essentials. Um, in terms of total cost, well that varies. I've, I've done some analysis, I've, I've put some rough prices up on the screen. Um, in terms of Billy Basics needs to have to get you going when you've got your caravan, you probably need to fork out about an extra 250 quid. And that is on things like towing mirrors, um, things like a aqua roll, things like a waste master, a pump, you know, um, the, the leveling blocks, um, ramps, those sorts of things. You're probably gonna need to spend about 250 pounds to get yourself set up with all those essentials. Now, if you were to then go the whole hog with a, you know, a, a camper air awning like we have, and all those other accessories I've mentioned, barbecues and stuff, you can bang another 1,200 quid on easily. I mean, the, the air awning cost us 850 pounds, and that was four years ago. When we bought this current van, lo and behold, under the bed was the, the exact same camper air awning. Can you believe that? Uh, 850 pounds we paid four years ago. So, Put it all together, you could be talking about £1,500 worth of accessories. And within that, and I'm not even factored in bedding or sleeping bags or all the things you need for cooking, you know, and plates and all that stuff, the toaster, etc. It can run away with you. It really can. Um, however, all of that said, if you were to get onto Facebook Marketplace or 
on eBay or somewhere like that, you will find uh, a lot of this stuff available at a very, very good price. Probably you could knock 50 to 75% off the cost of buying new, depending on what it is that you're buying. Um, on Facebook, there's lots of caravanning groups, camping groups, motorhome groups, where people have perhaps retired and decided or decided this is not for them anymore, and they've got all these accessories for sale. You can save yourself an absolute fortune. So there you go, that's um, another vlog done. I hope that was useful to you, particularly if you're new to caravanning and motorhoming. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, really appreciate it if you just click the old subscribe button and click the bell as well for a notification of when our next vlogs will be out. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, I hope you did. And please, any top tips that you have around uh, accessories or caravan security, uh, or nice to haves even, uh, for your unit to make your caravanning and camping uh, much more pleasurable, then please include them in a, in a comment below. That would be much appreciated. So until next time, we'll speak to you soon. Cheers, bye.